said that, uh, here we are from the world of Gisborne today, bringing to you another wine institute, which is an instant tutorial. Today, what should we talk about? Today I'd like to talk about uh, something I mentioned earlier, about uh, Zinfandel grape variety, which, uh, as I may have told you, Balboa, when uh, he saw the Pacific Ocean, uh, you know, really liked the area of California. Uh, there are some say that he brought with him some strains of, of grapes, which uh, is the uh, heritage of Zinfandel. And then there are others that will tell you that Zinfandel is indigenous to California. Uh, either way, it's there. It grows uh, uh, everywhere. Uh, also, there are those that will tell you it's got Hungarian origins, it's got some uh, southern, southwestern Italian origins, but really, where it comes from, it matters not. The fact that it grows and makes phenomenal wine is important. Now, for those that don't know, Zinfandel is an intensely pigmented red grape. Um, all of the grapes that I know of, you can make white wine from the red grapes. Champagne mostly is made from Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, a few other grapes. Pinot Noir is the predominant grape variety, and Pinot Noir is a red grape. You can make a white wine, a clear white wine from Cabernet Sauvignon, which is a pretty full-bodied red wine. Same thing with uh, uh, Merlot, Shiraz, uh, Carmenere. Uh, every other red grape that I know of, you can make white wine from. Now, here's the twist. When I mentioned about the late 50s, 60s, early 70s, when the American palate, mostly younger generation, was going towards the sweeter wines. They were getting off liquor. Uh, it's the love generation, uh, free speech, free love, as some say, the age of Aquarius. Uh, the heavy red wine that Zinfandel uh, made was not part of that menu. So here we have have California planted up with Zinfandel. What of all the growers, what are all the winemakers going to do with this bulk of red, intensely flavored, dry, full-bodied red wine? Great Italian style, great food, great for uh, uh, full-bodied meats, uh, barbecues, that sort of thing. So now back in Germany they have a style of making wine, which is called wine herbst, is what that does is they pick the grapes early, this is Riesling mostly, they pick the grape early in the harvest season, even before the harvest season, so the grape has a little less residual sugar, lower fructose, they do not allow all of that fructose to turn into alcohol through the fermentation process, so you have a lower alcohol with a little bit of uh, fructose, a little bit of uh, fruit quality, and it's got some acid quality as well because it's a younger grape uh, as far as the harvest is concerned. So what a winery named Santino tried, they tried picking the Zinfandel grape, free running the juice, which is simply when you squish the, the grape, the juice runs right away from uh, the skins, so it doesn't pick up any additional pigmentation. 
But the interesting thing is, the juice running away from that grape was pink, salmon and tinge, because the pigmentation of the Zinfandel is, is so intense that the juice was taint colored, not tainted. It was colored inside the grape. So here they have a pink wine now from a red grape, which is made in the white winemaking style. Okay, so white Zinfandel, red grape, pink in color. That's how that all came about. Now what do they do to, do to that juice? They allowed some of that fructose to turn into alcohol. You'll find most zins are, white zins are 9 to 11, maybe 12 percent, where red zins are 13, 14, 15 percent. So there's a little residual sugar, pink in color, lower alcohol, little acidity, phenomenal wine. Hit the streets. Everybody thinks now that Zinfandel is a pink wine where it's always been red, they had to, in essence, manipulate the winemaking process in order to be right there, in order to uh, uh, get to where we are. I'm going to take a break right now, so if you would please uh, talk amongst yourself.